Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Jane, for bringing the sense of the spirit into our meeting through your playing. Absolutely beautiful. I don't know if you picked up the words. Lord, we glorify you. We love you. We lift your name. And that's just what we want to do this morning. Last week, we celebrated Pentecost, the time that we celebrated the arrival of the Holy Spirit. No longer was the Holy Spirit just hovering like he was at the beginning in Genesis 1, hovering over the waters. No longer was he just hovering over us as disciples. He was given to us to be in us, to help us, to dwell in us. Pentecost, through the beginning of the Spirit, we can become united in one spirit. The Spirit birthing within us ministries that can enable us to worship Jesus and enable us to take Jesus out into the world. Well, this Sunday, in the church world, is known as Trinity Sunday. Today, as a Salvation Army, we celebrate a God that is not aloof, that is not distant, unremote, or apart from us. We worship God who came down like fire to burn within us, to set us free, to give us mission into our hearts and burn it there within our hearts. We need the Spirit of God to burn within us even more during these days. And we're going to worship. We're going to invite God to come into our hearts, to come into the world. And we're going to gather together as a Spirit of God dwells amongst us, brings us together in unity, makes us one as we worship. And as we sing, we're going to stand and we're going to invite the Spirit not only to come into our hearts, but to come into the world because we need him more than ever. Great is the darkness. So let's stand and sing this wonderful song.
Jesus, you hear our prayer. We are praying that your Holy Spirit will come and move amongst us. We are praying that your Holy Spirit will come and impact us. We are desperate for there to be a move of God amongst our land. We are desperate for your spirit to come and move among our church, in our neighborhood, in our city. Father, we know that there is so much more than what we see day by day. You want to just fill your church with power. You want your people within your churches to be filled with the power of the spirit so that they can become more and more like you, Jesus. Oh Lord, would you move in power? Would you show us how to worship? Would you show us how to pray? Would you show us how to be one body? Would you show us how to use the gifts that you have given to us? Oh Holy Spirit, come and move amongst us. You are so welcome here. We desire you. So come, come Holy Spirit, move amongst us, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We're going to continue to worship. You will know this song, this chorus. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. I say it again. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Let's sing this chorus. And then we're going to pray. We're going to sing through song 294. <clears throat> Breathe on me, breath of God. We're going to make that prayer as we sing it, telling the Spirit what we want to happen within our lives. The holiness of God moving Himself amongst us. And we're saying, Lord, let your Spirit breathe in me. Let me drink it in. Let me be drenched in it this morning. Let's sing this and make this our prayer.
allow the Spirit to minister with the words that you have prayed. <clears throat> and if the Spirit puts words on your hearts to pray to the Father, then you pray. Let that freedom flow of the Spirit moving amongst us, prompting us to pray. Our Father, this morning we come into your presence in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. And we think of that time in the upper room when they were all there with one accord. Mm. With one accord. To have fellowship with thee and with thy beloved Son and with each other. How wonderful it is to be able to come <coughs> to a quiet place with those of like mind who want to have fellowship with each other and with thy beloved Son. And we thank you, Father, this morning for the cross work of Christ and how we're here and the triune God was there at his baptism. Yeah. This is my beloved son. Yeah. And the spirit of God was hovering above his head. And he was led by the spirit. And he was guided by the spirit. And so should we be this morning. We are so thankful that thou art in our midst. For your word tells us that where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. And I will not leave you comfortless. I will send the Comforter Amen. to come along and come beside you and lift you in those difficult moments and strengthen you and put words into your mouth that you can praise God again. Oh, our Father, help us to pray and help those people and our brothers and sisters who have not prayed in public before. May they just be brave enough just to stand up and say thank you Lord for saving my soul. Thank you Father for giving me your spirit to indwell me <coughs> and lead me on to that point in the air when we must we shall meet the Lord and so shall we always be with the Lord. We have just sang I will never die Oh, believers will never die. Amen. We will pass from this period of time into a world of eternity. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And we look forward to hearing him say, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. What a day that will be when our Saviour we shall see. <coughs> when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. Yeah. What a day. Yeah. Glorious day. That will be. Mm. Father, we haven't got words <coughs> enough to express our thanks to you this morning. But we are so glad to be here, to be able to sit in the presence of the triune God. In his precious name we ask. Amen. Amen.
If you've got the songbook open at 294, that song that we sang, you might like to look at those words. And is there a verse there that you want to pray out this morning? Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, yeah. that I may love what Thou dost love, and do what Thou wouldst do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Breathe on me, breath of God. So shall I never die, yeah. but live with Thee the perfect life of Thine eternity. Amen. Amen. Can we have the last verse up? And let's all read this together as a as unity in prayer. Breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I never die, but live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. Amen. Amen. Thank you to those who prayed. Now, Sergeant Major is going to come and do our Bible reading this morning. Matthew chapter 28. So the Bible reading this morning is the last five verses of Matthew's Gospel. Matthew 28 commencing to read at verse 16. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Little quiz for you. Anybody guess what the next song is going to be from the words that you've just heard? Okay, song number 932. The Lord's command to go into the world and preach the gospel unto all is just as true today as when his disciples heard this mighty call. We're going to stand, we're going to sing this wonderful song and I invite you to come and give of your offering as we sing.
So that was just a few short verses that um, Noel read to us this morning, and yet this passage is just so huge. So big, in fact, that if we were only to focus on one particular subject, one particular portion of this scripture, the danger is you're going to look at that and you're going to go, whoa, that's far too big for little old me. There's no way I can do all of that that the Lord is telling me, commanding me, I have to go and do. Miriam Swaffield from the uh, Student Fusion Movement said, if you focus on the middle section of this particular portion of scripture, it won't feel like a great commission. It will feel like a crushing commission. It definitely won't feel like good news. That if you're being told, go out into all the world, baptizing them in the name of Jesus and telling them about the Lord Jesus, go and make disciples of all nations, you're going to be overwhelmed. If you just focus in on that bit, you're going to be completely overwhelmed and you're almost going to be taking a whip to yourself to saying, I am not doing good enough. I'm not telling as many people as what the Lord is telling me I need to get out there and do. That won't feel like good news when you are putting yourself down because you're not doing enough. We want scripture to be good news. We want you to be empowered to see the things that scripture is saying, the bits that stand out. We want you to look at a portion of scripture like this and have questions. What do, why does it say this? What's it saying to us? We want you to be empowered by scripture to be able to live out the mission, to live out the purpose that God has given to you as a Christian. We want you to be empowered by scripture to be able to live out the very things that God has not only said in his word, but what the spirit is putting on your heart of what you need to be doing. So grab your Bibles, turn back to Matthew chapter 28 and verse 16. What is the first word that you see written there in verse 16? It's not a trick question. Then. Can we go to verse 18 as well? What is the first word there? When there is a then, we need to ask, if there's a then, there must be a backstory behind it. Because if you're starting a sentence with then, you're in... It's, you're in the middle of something. It, there has to be a story that leads up to it. So when you read the word end, you have to ask what comes before that? What has been happening? What kind of things make up that then? So turn back to the beginning of chapter 28. We've not got that on, on the scripture there. I'll just quickly brief you through it. What's been happening? Jesus has died and the hope of the disciples... And all the followers have died along with Jesus at that moment. The ladies go to the tomb and they look at it. They want to look at the tomb. And there is a violent earthquake. An angel rolls back the tomb, tells the women, don't be afraid. Wherever you see uh, stories of angels, you'll always hear the words, don't be afraid. They must be really scary looking if they're saying to the people, do not be afraid. If you meet an angel, his first words to you or will be, do not be afraid. Those angels must have been really scary looking because if you look at the next verse, the guards who were guarding the, the garden tomb at that point, they're shaking so much like jelly. They're that scared that they've actually become like statues and they're looking dead. The fear has actually scared them to look like they are dead. What does the angel do? The angel says, go to the other disciples. Tell them Jesus is alive. 
The thing that Jesus said he would do, he has done. So the angel says, go, tell the other disciples what Jesus said he would do, he has gone and done it. So the women turn, they start to go, to go and tell the disciples. Oh, ladies, be encouraged. The very first evangelists, women, going to tell others that what Jesus said he would do, he did. Be encouraged. Then suddenly, the women are about to make their way to the disciples. And suddenly, who meets them? Jesus. Jesus meets them. And what does he say? Not, hiya, how you doing? Greeting. He uses a term that those women would know. He speaks in a language that they would be saying amongst their friends. Greetings, sister. How are you doing today? Greetings, brother. It's a phrase they would know. So Jesus has met them at the point of where they are. And he's speaking just as they would understand it. Greetings. What would help you to understand? What, how could Jesus speak to you to make you feel like, yes, this is Jesus? I, I know it's him. How does he need to speak to you for you to fully understand in the way that you understand that it is him? And as he says greetings, he says, go and tell my brothers. Tell them what I said I would do, I have done. As the women are on their way, guess who else is on their way? If you look at that scripture, the guards who were standing at the tomb have suddenly come to life and they are on their way because they are suddenly fearful that the tomb that they are guarding, that great big stone that was put in place, has been rolled away and the tomb is empty, but they were given the job to stand in line and to stand guard. Now, because the tomb is empty, they're the ones that are going to get in trouble that the tomb is now empty. So they, along with the women going off to tell the disciples that Jesus is alive, the guards are off on their way to tell the chief priests that Jesus is no longer dead, that he is not in the temple. And this, they wanted to tell the chief priests what they had witnessed. And this is where the rumors began, that the disciples stole the body. Because the chief priests didn't want the whole world knowing that Jesus rose from the dead. And the rumors began at that point in, in um, chapter 28 from verse 11 onwards. You hear, you see that the chief priests are saying, start spreading the rumor. Jesus' body has been stolen. It's not true. He's not risen from the dead. And yet Jesus has been there standing in front of these women. Go and tell my disciples that I am alive. You see, Psalm 2 gives us uh, indication from a prophecy that this was going to happen, that there were going to be um, a, a banding together of rulers who will want to spread false news. It was there prophesied in Psalm 2. And here we see it there at the tomb side, these rumors going on. The disciples at that point have become wanted men. And that's not an easy place to share your, your faith from. You've got Jesus saying, go, tell the nations. You've got Jesus saying to the women, go and tell the disciples. And then Jesus is saying, go and tell the nations. The rumors have been spreading that the disciples stole the body of Jesus, so they have become wanted men that whoever is going to find them is going to want to deal with them for making false news that Jesus is indeed alive. They've become wanted men. How are they going to share their faith in such a place of being wanted men? 
In verse 16, back to verse 16, we see that the 11 disciples went to Galilee. One of those disciples is missing. They must be hurting. They must be absolutely wounded that one of their team is missing. They're wanted men. They're hurt. They're wounded. And yet Jesus still calls them. Still calls them regardless of everything, all the turmoil that's going on within them. And the team see Jesus. When they saw him, they worshipped him in verse 17. But some doubted. The team saw Jesus. Some of them have worshipped, fall at his feet and worship him. But others, doubting. Is this really Jesus? Did he really come back to life? It's okay to have doubts, to have those kind of questions. Despite all that they had been through and witnessed, Jesus was there. Some of them may question it, but Jesus was there. And then we are back at verse 18. Then Jesus came to them. All of that stuff happened. And then Jesus came to them and said... Let's pause a moment before we go on to see what Jesus had to say. Let's just pause for a moment. What's your then? What's your backstory of coming to know Jesus? What's your backstory of all that's gone in your life to make you get to the point where you can worship him? What's your backstory of everything that you are going through that actually you are questioning, why does Jesus let me go through that kind of stuff? The doubts that are rising. What hurts are there that prevent you from sharing your faith? What rumors have been said about you, but you keep going? What wounds do you carry? What's your backstory? Well, verse 18, Jesus says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. All authority. That says, Hey guys, hey team, I've got this. The pressure is off. You haven't got to do it by yourself. I'm there. Whatever you've come up against, I'm there with you. Listen, I've had everything thrown at me. I've been there. I've done it. I've got the t-shirt. I will walk with you and I will be there by your side. I definitely have the authority in these matters because I have been there so I can help you. Jesus says, all authority, not just some, but all. Do you know, if, if, if a burglar um, tried to come into our house um, and say one of you was looking after our house when the burglar tried to come in, you wouldn't be saying to the burglar, oh, um, the owners are away at the moment and, and I'm looking after this house, so please don't come in here. Um, it's, it's not my house. Um, I'm looking after it. Please, please move on. Please, please don't come in here. That's not very authoritative. It's not very confident building to that burglar. And he's going to push you out of the way to try to get through to get the riches. Not in our house, I have to say. But, <laughs> but the... The owners, us, we have given you permission to look after our house as though it were yours. 
We've given you the authority to look after our house while we are away. We have given you the authority to stop anybody coming over the threshold that shouldn't be coming over the threshold. We have said, I give you authority to look after this house, to look after it as though it were your own property. So if the burglar tried to come in, you'd be going, no, 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 there's no way you are coming in. I am looking after this house as though it is my own. You be gone. You have the authority that has been given to you to deal with such a person. The Lord has all authority. Jesus has risen from the dead, risen from the dead. He now has authority over death. It cannot hold him. The pressure is off. The authority becomes ours. You know, if a policeman stands in the middle of the road with a 10-ton truck coming towards him, he is not going to stop that lorry in his own strength. It will flatten him. But if he stands and says, in the name of the law, I tell you to stop, the authority of the law gives him the power to stop that 10 ton truck hitting him. The the authority that Jesus gives us is in his name. He gives us the authority to go into the world to tell others in his authority. That means if it's his authority, he's the one that's going to give the power. If it's his authority, he's going to give us the means and the enablement to go out into all the world to tell the story. If it is his authority, we are using his name to be able to move forward. If we didn't understand the backstory, and if we don't understand all that Jesus has done for us and he says, therefore, go. If we're not understanding that backstory, how scary is it going to be for us to go into the world and tell the others what Jesus has done? And we're more likely to say, therefore, no. No. No way am I going out there. The job seems too huge when you see it just in that little verse, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. That is absolutely huge. You have to leave right now because the whole wide world that we have to reach with all of that stuff that Jesus has told us to do has become too much of a burden and I cannot possibly do that. Even though Jesus has given me all authority, I still can't do all of that by myself. If something is too big, it becomes a burden. And we're told in scripture the only burden that we should be carrying is love. But if something is a burden, you're going to fall before you even start. Friends, when you know your backstory, when you know your own backstory of what life was like before Jesus or what life was like without Jesus, you then have a story to be able to share with at least one person of how your life is different now that you do have Jesus, now that Jesus walks with you, if you look around this room, if you look at everyone who is sitting here, everybody has a backstory. Everybody has some reason as to why they come to church. Someone, somewhere along the line has shared the story, shared the backstory that has brought you to this place. Whether it's been friends, whether it's been parents, whether it's been husbands or wives or even children. They have told you a story of what life was like before Jesus, without Jesus, that has sparked an interest within you to say, yes, I think I'll go along. 
Because changing the world, if you try to do the whole world at one time, it's going to be too much of a burden. But changing one life at a time, you see one life changed, you're going to be like, yes, yes, I want more of this. I'm going to go and tell more. When we were divisional youth officers in London North East, uh, we had a, a, a summer school uh, with a whole group of young people. And there was one lad during a, a prayer time one afternoon, one evening, we had a prayer time. And um, Dale stood up and he said, can I say something? Can I please say something? Dale got up and he said, you know, last week I got filled with the Holy Spirit. And it was absolutely amazing. He said, I don't know if any of you have experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, but I experienced him last week and it was amazing. And I just want to say to you now, Dale was, was 13. And Dale said, I just want to say to you lot, Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your lives and ask Jesus to do something within you and it will be amazing. From one person sharing his testimony, that whole room asked for Jesus to come into their lives, asked the Holy Spirit to come and fill them. And we saw teenagers, young men and women, we saw the leaders of the camp falling on their knees and just asking for the Holy Spirit to come and fill them. And that led, at the end of that week, for those young people to be going out to their own individual Salvation Army Corps, taking the Holy Spirit with them. We saw children taking the, the kids alive, the junior soldier as it was back then, taking that into school with them to show their friends what the cartoon Bible story was about and asking them, what do you think that means? We saw teenagers, oh, how dare they, teenagers having prayer meetings in the middle of the night, praying for their friends to get saved. We had a meeting where they filled a theater with all the friends that they had invited to come. And as we prayed, as we spoke the word, I cannot tell you how many teenagers ran to the front and fell on their knees at the mercy seat and asked Jesus to come and be their saviour. That all started from one lad, one 13-year-old, standing, giving his testimony, saying, I asked the Holy Spirit to fill me, and last week I asked Jesus to come into my life. He, he could have been out telling the whole world because that one testimony, that one piece of sharing, that vital bit of information started spreading the word. And that, that happens here. We're all from different nations. We're all from different cultures. We're all from different parts of the country, from different parts of the world. But there has to have been something that allowed us a spack story from somewhere that started that journey of bringing us all together. Don't think you've got to go out there on the streets absolutely every single day trying to tell the whole world because of this is what you've seen in Scripture. When you look at the backstory, the angel said to the women, go and tell the disciples. They had one person to tell. Well, it was 11 in that case, but one person. Who can you tell? Let's pause for a moment again and ask another question. Am I a disciple who is still learning about Jesus? What questions do I have for him about the commands he wants me to learn about? What do I want to know more about about him? His words? What is the Spirit prompting you to learn? Jesus finishes with these assuring words in verse 20. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He's given you authority. And in this... 
He's giving you support and assurance. Surely I'm with you always. He's investing in this. He's investing in this fully because surely that's a certainty. I'm with you always. Here's the investment to the very end of the age. We can do this because we have his support. And the promise is there that that support will be with us all of the time, not just some, all to the very end of the age. It will be there regardless. There's one other thing I want to draw out from this passage. When you read this in verse 18, Jesus is not giving a message from a distance and saying, go. It's not like he's standing up on a very high platform shouting at the disciples, go, go into all the world and make disciples. No, we read there, then Jesus came to them. He came close. He wasn't at a distance. He came close and he embraced them. He came up close giving assurance, purpose and support. Let's pause for one last time. What is the good news of this passage of scripture for you? What is the good news to take into work tomorrow? or when you go out for coffee with friends, or when you sit around the dinner table with your loved ones. What is the good news of that passage? What is the good news when you are packing for your holiday or waving goodbye to grandchildren? What is the good news that Jesus has to say to you today? We're going to sing song number eight, um, 439. And if there are some questions that you want the Lord to answer, or if there is reassurance, support that you need from him, as we sing this song, I invite you to come and use our mercy seat to pray. And if you just want to be left alone to pray, bring a songbook or a Bible with you. But if you want someone to come and pr- you want someone to pray with you, that you want to share some of the burden, then, then come open-handed and allow someone to pray. But let's sing and let's pray as we sing.
precious Jesus, would you forgive us when we have made everything about us? When everything in all of creation is about you. The only song of heaven is about you. The only sermon that your father preached in the whole of the New Testament was about you when he said, this is my beloved son. Oh Lord, we want you to fill our vision and our hearts and we ask for a deeper revelation of your love. even in the things that we do for you, will never replace our devotion and worship and ministry to you. Lord, everything we do as individuals and as your core here on Dublin Road must come from our love relationship and abiding with and in you. So in these days ahead, would you fill our hearts and our minds with your beauty again and again and again. And may the sharing of the good news in the light of your love and in the confidence of your authority over all things, come not from a sense of duty or ought to, but out of that love relationship with you. Lord, where we need disturbing, would you disturb us? Where we need shaking up, would you shake us up? If you need to chide us, then gently chide us. But do not leave us, do not pass us by. May our love for you go greater, our vision of you grow greater, until all of heaven joins with us as we all sing and shout the name of Jesus. <coughs> to your glory, we pray. Amen. Can we sing that chorus? Oh, if there's only one song I can oh, sing. When an inspiration I see the great King. This shall my song in eternity be. Take that truth home with you, that Jesus loves you, Amen. that what he asks you to do, he is there by your side for always. He's there to support you, he's invested in you, and his love has promised to be there always to the very end of the age. Let's stand and have a final song, song number 930. Tell them in the east and in the west. And we declare Christ for the whole wide world. Let's stand together. Thank you, Jane.
to this world we pray that your love will go with us your love will be above us your love will be below us and all around us that we go with your support we go with your affirmation we go knowing that you are fully invested in us always till the very end of the age give us courage to share when the opportunity presents itself Help us to acknowledge our backstory of what life was like before, without, and what it is like now. And may we have the courage to be able to share in the days ahead that one life may be changed and that be the start of many other lives Amen. being changed. And we pray this in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.